Just outside of Missoula, Montana is a trout creek that offers blue ribbon fishing. I'm not going to say which creek it is, but nestled between the Bitterroot Mountains and Sapphires, the scenery is as great as the fishing. Except for this ugly duckling of a fishing cabin. Built in the 1990s, it was constructed to the energy efficient standards of the day, including a layer of foam insulation on the outside of a 2x6 wall with blown insulation. When the weekend cabin became a permanent home of Joe, the fisherman, the outside needed a facelift. Joe knew a builder with a pile of rough sawn pine left over from a big board and batten job. He had the wood delivered and hired Chris Whalen to teach him how to install it. First, Chris set up shop. <laughs> well, when I watch this, it doesn't look like we're doing a very good job of setting up. As far as tools that we needed, glide saw and a table saw, the two main tools that were used. In terms of where we set up, it was just where the pile of lumber was relative to where we were going to be applying it. Before the siding could be installed, Chris outlined the perimeter with corners, water tables, and rake boards. I took all the corner boards to my shop and I ripped them on the table saw, the big table saw. By mitering the joint, it looks like a, an actual 6x6 six six is sitting there rather than, you know, a couple of boards just laid over the surface. The corners are biscuited, mainly to index them. Because rough sawn lumber is varying thicknesses, the biscuits offer an equal amount off the face to yield a long, crisp miter after they are glued, clamped, and screwed into place. Next comes the window trim. I did the windows two ways. The first one I did piece by piece. But he decided to pre-assemble them instead. Because I wasn't super happy with the way this was going together. It was difficult to get things pulled into into place and get the miters right and where the, the side pieces butt to the header. So I decided to pre-assemble. This made a tight fit on all of the joints of all of the windows. It was simpler to do and in my opinion they came out better. He built the casing to be a little bigger than the outside dimensions of the window frame. Maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around. And when I pre-assembled them, I biscuited and used uh, pocket screws on the back side. Over the horizontal trim pieces, a flashing is installed, mostly to protect the trim piece. Because the wall is already watertight, any leaks that get behind the new siding will drain down the old siding and out the bottom. The other reason is climate. We're a high mountain desert. You don't get very much rainfall. But we don't get driving rain. The flashing really just protects the horizontal trim pieces from surface runoff. With the perimeter framed, it's time to screw some wood to the walls. He starts in the center of the wall. You're either going to start with a board in the center or a gap in the center. Depending on how the width of the boards divides out over the width of the wall. The first board is plumbed into position and screwed to the wall in the center of the board. That allows the boards to expand or contract without cracking. If you fasten wide boards with two screws across the face, the boards will crack when they expand and contract. The screws through the battens go between the boards. To not anchor the edge against movement. Chris begins by cutting the big pieces for Joe to install first. And part of that was just a timing thing because I could come back and fool around with the boards that needed to be cut while Joe was screwing off the rest of the boards. So I was just trying to you know, keep ahead of him. Joe eyeballs a three quarter inch gap between boards and plums them as he goes along, working his way towards the corner. Now it's time to fill the gables. First, Chris and Joe fill in the rake trim. Joe begins with a gap in the center and aligns the boards with those below. The gable on this side has a porch roof, so the pieces are angled at the top and bottom. Back on the easy side, Joe fills in the remaining boards and battens. This stain grade siding will eliminate the need to paint, so this fisherman will have time for what's important after converting a weekend cabin into a full-time fishing hideaway. <laughs> 